Our, our next speaker is Alex uh, Varbanov from Procter & Gamble. Uh, this is a really cool statistical engineering case study. I've seen an earlier version of this talk. There's been some great work coming out of Procter & Gamble. Uh, also to plug them, there they are one of our organizational members. So very happy to see this work. So Alex, the floor is yours. Thank you, Geoff. Can you see my first slide? Yes, we're good. Okay, thank you. Um, I would like to thank the organizers for the invitation, um, and I also would like to thank to thank my PNG colleague William Brenneman, who uh, made the connection with the organizers. I have been with the company for 21 years. I haven't heard statistical engineering term before, maybe two three years ago. Um, since then, we had uh, several presentations um, internally of external speakers on, on the topic and even a workshop last year that Professor Vining gave, gave to us. So um, I have been more familiar with that um, topic and framework in the last few years. And I kind of came to a couple of realization. First, definitely it's very helpful when you think and work on big unstructured problems. The second thing is a lot of the stuff that was presented was kind of familiar to me. So I think I was kind of lucky to work in a big company for 20 years, uh, a company that um, invest in personal development, um, also uh, provides variety of different projects to work on, which could be some complex at the time. So by gaining a lot of experience, um, I was able to kind of learn statistical engineering um, on the fly. Uh, I don't think my um, colleagues that are new hires or any other statistician, uh, graduate, fresh graduate from statistical schools are in the same position. So my point here in the long introduction here is that I fully support the effort of formalizing this framework and even making it uh, part of the master or PhD program for statisticians. I think it will be very valuable. Uh, this is, I'm going to give you an example of uh, application of statistical engineering. Uh, it, this is the North America Competitive Laundry Initiative and this is work uh, together with my partners Sunny Escobar and Cindy, Cindy Rodenberg. Here's the talk outline. I'll give you some project background and the business impact that uh, it brings. Then I'll link the project to statistical engineering and cover the six critical stages of statistical engineering. I'm not going to be able to do a lot of details given the time and also some constraints on information I can share, but I think we'll cover enough to kind of illustrate the value of statistical engineering for this particular problem. And then I'll conclude with a summary at the end. I'll start with the PNG and the PNG mission. Um, as you may know, Procter & Gamble is one of the biggest uh, companies in the world uh, that produce consumer, consumer products. We have several 1 billion uh, brands like Tide, Pampers, uh, and a few others. And everything what we do is tied to our mission. Uh, a critical phrase from that mission is, we provide branded products and services of superior quality and value that improve the lives of the world consumers now and for generations to come. As you can see, kind of the center of this mission are the consumers. Um, and in order to satisfy even the most demanding uh, consumers, we need to produce, make uh, superior products. Uh, that's not only going to make consumers happy, but also would allow us to be to to perform well in a very competitive environment. And so if you want to produce superior products, you have to have a, a robust, unbiased, and uh, efficient way of measuring superiority um, internally within, within the company. Um, so this is what this initiative is about. A few more background about it. There are six uh, business units within PNG. Fabric and home care is the the biggest one, and I, I happen to support uh, that particular business unit, although I'm really part of a corporate function, data modeling sciences. So um, 
the laundry business a few years ago um, decided to invest it, to invest in landscaping the performance of key products on the market. And there's some uh, good competition there. There are well-established companies like Hankel and Oliver, and also some uh, new, uh, new private labels, kind of store brands that emerge as competition um, in dif on different benefits, laundry benefits. The key uh, laundry benefits that we are covering with these initiatives are stain removal, odor removal, whitening, color care, and freshness. Stain removal has been um, the kind of the established uh, laundry uh, cleaning benefit long term. There are new emergings, and then freshness is kind of the new direction, and it's very hard to, um, very tough area to work on. But stain removal has been long term the main uh, benefit to measure performance of products. So as part of this initiative uh, over three, four year period, we have started collecting data on um, multiple products, PNG and competitive. We have already uh, more than 800 and it's still growing. Uh, as part of this data collection effort, um, we have stain removal output. So we measure 20 or 20 or so different stains, um, performance on stains. Uh, we have malodor um, analytical methods to measure malodor uh, removal and, and whiteness readings on whiteness indices and, and so on. So we have collected quite a lot of data across different products, across different studies, across different benefits. Uh, just to give you an illustration, we, we cannot run this all at once. So we have to break this into smaller studies just to give you an example um, a, a typical stain removal study we place like eight products at a time uh, with three externals when I say external replicate I mean a separate individual wash per treatment um, and to give you a sense of the cost that typically costs about five thousand dollars so those are not cheap to place so when we place those studies and try to learn across uh, products, we have to be smart uh, in how inefficient in how we do that. Before I go into some details on related to statistical engineering, uh, just to kind of give you an illustration of what the business impact of this, there are several different aspects of the impact, but uh, I'll focus on three here. Um, on the left side, this represents kind of the communication and the information this um, effort this initiative gives to our sales teams to negotiate shell space um, when they discuss with retailers. That's always a high competition there. Having data to support superiority of our products is a, is a critical advantage. Uh, the second example is once you understand, collect data across the main products on the market, you can start use this data together with other body of evidence to support claims of uh, superiority and um, that gave uh, this data was part of the evidence supporting type number one claim um, for stain and other other removal and then there are the third uh, uh, impact which is kind of more interesting for me as a statistician is um, provides data that can be linked with other data, for example, sales, uh, sale price, sales price or other data to build some models to do virtual screening of new laundry prototypes. So um, I think overall we believe this program brings us a competitive advantage. The key components are right data or right data foundation, uh, a multidisciplinary team with a, a variety of skills, and then strong partnership between the business unit and the corporate function that uh, brings the statistical skills. Uh, of course, the, the core of that that ties all of this together is applying these resources and data and information tied together with the statistical engineering principles um, that I'm going to focus more on the next few slides. So why is this problem, which kind of seems simple on the first side, well, why is it really a statistical engineering problem? Well, on one side, we have a large, in terms of, we have a lot of benefits and a lot of uh, products. Um, obviously, it's not large enough as a genomics problem or some of these online uh, data collection sources that like Google might have access to or other companies, but it's kind of rather large for the um, for a consumer product company, I, I think. 
So it's also not only work, but kind of multi-dimensional, multiple benefits. We have um, we have to work with uh, different customers, type of customers that benefit from this data. So there is kind of multiplicity aspect of this that make it uh, more complex. We have data challenges, uh, the different data sources for different benefits goes through different measurement groups and comes from analytical groups, some from sensory panels. Um, so the data could be quite dispersed, could be quite um, not standardized. So there are a lot of efforts on that side. To some extent, it's complex statistically. Um, so you have multiple studies, they have products, you don't. There is no complete block designs. These are incomplete, so you have partial overlap. So how do you deal with this so that at the end you can make comparison of products that are not placed in the same test? So there is not as complex maybe as some of the previous two examples, but there is a, a, an inherent complexity there. Um, there is also, um, it, because it consists of so many moving parts, it's a system that requires to have some strategy on it. Where do we start? How do we structure it? Uh, what outputs do we present? And, and, and so on. So there are components that once you put this all together, it becomes kind of a complex, somewhat complex system that requires statistical engineering thinking. All right, so I think the paper by um, is one of the first references that I have seen on statistical engineering. They nicely kind of lay out the six stages that you have to go through. They are enumerated one through six, but I believe there is sort of an iteration happening. So it's not really so one dimensional going from one to six. There is um, iterative steps and, and learnings here. Uh, so I would like to kind of give you a few critical parts in our project, how it relates to those uh, six stages. So let's talk first about uh, identifying the high impact problem. Uh, to great extent, this is about uh, understanding what are the critical questions that you need to answer. Um, so you want really to have um, find answers to the right questions, not, not to, the wrong, to the wrong ones. So identifying what the critical ones is important and what value they bring to the business is also important. So for this project, there are kind of four groups of questions. The first one is the status quo or kind of the benchmarking. So what, um, how do we compare to, to the critical competitors? Um, that, that's kind of benchmarking. The second one is investment. This is more about when to do the investment, when do we have to make formulation changes so that we separate ourselves from the competitors. The third one is related to the consumer. So if we have the evidence to show that we are, um, so we have superior products, how do we communicate this to the consumer? I think that's, uh, that's important for the business. And then the last thing, the expansion is more where or what changes to make um, versus the second one, the investment is when. Um, so all of those questions are important and our data can address those. Uh, another point I wanna make here is not only about finding the right questions, but also we work in industry in an environment where you're competing for resources within the same company. So funding people with expertise. So you, the questions that you're trying to answer has to provide value for the business more than other projects uh, in order to be able to get funding. So um, in this case, we were able to convince the management that this is an important initiative. Going to the second point about providing structures, um, I have two kind of points here. One is on the team structure. I think PNG is an environment where heavily relies on um, teams working together, um, people working together in teams and um, with different skills and be able to deliver results at the end. So we had a rather small team here, only of four or five people. The product researcher is kind of the project leader. He's familiar, she, in this case, was Sunny was familiar with um, technology, with the products, with the business needs. She's the main interactor with sales teams. A uh, lab researcher is the person that's responsible for the data collection. Statistician in this case would be me. Uh, 
kind of I had to use variety of statistical skills to contribute on this project from statistical thinking to uh, experimental design skills or generation of uh, experimental designs data processing analysis and, and so on the informatist is the person that helps with developing tools to access web tools to access the statistical results and of course we have the support and participation of the management on the team a critical part kind of here is i think we were part of that we were successful we were a relatively small team in my experience smaller teams work better as long as they cover well the required skills needed to success to succeed with the project the second point i want to make about providing structure is product annotation um, originally when we started collecting the data um, because they were coming from different measurement groups um, one and the same product was really labeled differently and it was kind of a lot of manual work in the beginning to align the data critical for the analysis and then for retrieving the result is you want to make sure one of the same product is labeled the same way across studies and across benefits um, it sounds like trivial but that's one of the biggest challenges we have uh, within the company i believe it's probably a common issue for um, companies that have that are big and they have been existing for a long time so we, what, how we kind of solve or deal with this is we establish this six layer here he um, and then on top of that we built a process that every time when a new product enters our um, initiative it's labeled consistently in the same way and it has the same code and it's used um, down the road in the same way so that makes really the life of a statistician to integrate the information across studies and then um, easy to retrieve data across different benefits at the end so i move to the next part which is understand the context this was really about understanding what challenge critical challenges we're going to have on the way to succeed to achieve our goals or to answer our questions there are three kind of things I want to mention here first is working in a highly focused organization that's the reality it's a company big like PNG and even small company a critical part is you have to be successful at the moment so you have to have products at the moment that they're, they're winning or you have to sell products now so there is this kind of inherent bias toward delivering now so convincing the management that this initiative helps with that but also importantly helps long-term understanding the big picture the entire category so that was kind of a barrier we have to be aware of and we have to deal but uh, of course we we convinced and we, it was successful um, uh, consideration of, of the management in our company the second component is an, in, an initiative like that requires some cost investment so in order to understand the category you have to spend the money to test across uh, multiple products so um, in order for us to be to convince management to be more successful we have to be um, also to be more efficient of how we do this so creating new test methods that are still objective but allow us more efficiently to estimate stuff across different uh, products or to measure i should say um, was was critical also innovating or thinking how we can aggregate information across individual tests so we can compare more products from different tests uh, it was part of this as well and the last part is uh, more about kind of internal considerations so there is always this pressure within the industry to deliver more with less resources uh, so this is more of a kind of a mental things if uh, it's always there so people has to embrace it uh, and just do their best and from that point on don't uh, kind of stress out about those um, those things um, so the fourth component of the statistical engineering is developing a strategy um, there are four important points here data standardization data quality I, I talked about the standardization already there are also other levels of standardization across data sets um, within a benefit across statistical code so that we can automate the analysis and so on the data quality using validated technical methods is important so in order to give good data you need to have good methods that provide quality 
quality data. So we have validation of technical methods, which means essentially assessment first of the reproducibility of the technical methods. Uh, I would like to have a slide on the last two, one slide for each one of the last two parts. So statistical thinking during planning and then a point network meta-analysis. Um, probably not much to say here since this audience is probably familiar well with statistical um, thinking and, and um, experimental design. But um, everything what we have studied in the experimental design course is helpful here, We're talking about randomization, blocking, using controls, optimal designs and replication. So this is critical in getting quality, quality data. The statistical tool um, to, that we kind of implemented in our strategy was the network meta-analysis. Uh, I like this paper that I referenced here. There are different ways to do network meta-analysis. This one is pretty straightforward. So if you're interested in that area, I would recommend you this one. This diagram I took online, I don't have the right resource for it, but I think it simply illustrates the, the, what network meta-analysis is about. So if you have a study where you have treatment A and B, you can directly compare them. Then if you have another study here on the right, B and C, you can directly compare B and C. But then through network meta-analysis, you can integrate the information from these two tests and then you can compare A and C indirectly. And that's, uh, that's the power of the network meta-analysis. If you want more details, that paper would be a great starting point. Number five is develop and execute tactics. There are many different tactical decisions that help us here. I think the four I want to kind of consider most critical ones are use PIWA study to validate the technical method. So that's kind of enforces the quality of the data. We use controls, repeated products across tests. So if you want to apply network meta analysis, you need to have these overlapping products to be able to do that. Um, we use SAS software for all data processing and analysis. It doesn't have to be SAS, uh, could be, have been R, but it just match our uh, resources at the time. So um, we went that way. And then provide access to product results using an online access, uh, access tool, which kind of leads me to my next point. So uh, after we do the statistical analysis, we create this uh, database of statistical results in the background. And then how do we make this easily accessible to uh, different users? It could be people that work on the sales teams, it could be product researchers that develop new products, or it could be people who do modeling um, with, with this data to connect it to other sources of information. Um, so what we came up with is um, a simple kind of solution. It's what we call a web tool. So it's an interface that a person can get to inter internet page um, they can select uh, products based on the product hierarchy uh, up to kind of six at a time and then uh, quickly get all of the results for those products um, as an output across all of the benefits for which we collect data. And the responsibility of a, st a statistician on the team is to kind of update the two regularly in the background when we get more data, so those tables in the background gets uh, um, updated. All right, so that's uh, kind of concludes my talk here. That's my final summary slide. Um, I like this diagram that's from the paper by Horowitz Nee. It kind of, at least for me, my interpretation of this diagram is statistical engineering really is kind of the glue or over the kind of the cell of capturing all of those components, statistical th theory, thinking, practice, and then uh, of course, the tools that we use to um, solve statistical problems. Um, so this is uh, the PNG Laundry Initiative is uh, is competitive product laundry initiative is complex and cover multiple benefits and products. The final solution is really the ability to make informed data driven business decision. That's the critical benefit of it. And hopefully this uh, example illustrated the statistical engineering plays a role um, and it's connected to these uh, kind of bigger problems. Um, so that's all I, I wanted to share. Um, if there's time for questions, so I'll, be, I'll be glad to, to answer. Oh, thank you, Alex. That was a wonderful presentation. It's always good to show the full picture of statistical engineering. And I think you did a great job with that, showing all the different phases of it. Uh, Sherry, I think we have one question, don't we? Yes, we actually have two questions now, but um, let me, from Ron Kennett, 
Um, Alex, is there a data science unit at P&G? And if so, how are the relations between these guys and the statisticians? Good question. Yes, there is. Um, um, we have um, a statistics group and we have data science group. They're both in the same division. There is a strong collaboration between the two groups. Um, actually, when the data science was established a few years ago, a few statisticians transferred. So there is a group we definitely are want to be uh, aware of the tendency and changes in the uh, in the happening in the, the data science world. So we are um, making changes internally to be up to speed with that. Thank you. Um, second question comes from Teresa Daly, and she says, were there any decision analysis techniques used to weight and roll up the multiple measures when comparing products at the end? Um, not formal decision uh, techniques. Um, I think it's it varies a lot by project and also for for some projects stain removal might be more important for other projects freshness freshness data might be more important so not necessarily when people get access to this data they use all of the benefits um, we are doing some weighting for example stain removal we kind of create indices that looks um, across all stains and we use some consumer data to do that um, we don't necessarily use formal decision techniques beyond the statistical significance uh, assessment, um, but uh, it's, this is the level in which we are. We, at some point, this could become relevant and important. I know when we connect uh, this data to um, sales data, then uh, we can use this data and techniques to understand the relative importance of the different benefits it maybe this is where the question was going so how more is more is stain removal more important than uh, freshness um, so one way to do that is to link it to some sales data and try to understand the importance of those uh, benefits through connection with this performance data that we have collected well i'd like to thank our three speakers uh, marco bart and alex I'd like to thank everybody who has been participating today. We still have, I see 58 people hanging on. That's very good. We very much appreciate it. We're in a position to announce the second of the three series for our online virtual summit. Uh, that will be October 22nd. It will be 10 to 12 US Eastern time. Uh, it will be four to six European time. Uh, Martha Gardner, uh, Ronald Dose, uh, Rod Gotthardt and I will be speaking. So I uh, hope that you will join us then. Sherry, do you have any final comments? Thank you all for coming. Be very much appreciated. And we thank you for your continued support of ICEA. So have a great weekend.